Welcome to Tea with Jan. I am Jan. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Tea Wear Wednesday, a day where I'm going to try to dedicate a little bit of time to showing off my tea wear. Because don't we all just love a good antique tea wear? <laughs> I'm so excited to share this piece with you guys. If you are interested in all things tea, such as drinking tea, looking at vintage tea wear, or new tea wear, please hit the subscribe button and follow along. That's what we're going to be chatting about. That's our game, tea wear. Today I am bringing to you this magnificent teapot. This is called a Twin Spout Tea Master teapot and it is from the Hall China Company made in the USA. I have the patent ready to discuss with you guys but before we do that let's actually just take a good look at this teapot. Like two spouts, one handle, like one lid, it's just it looks like a bowling ball but in like the best way ever like so adorable Let's see if I can show you all parts of it the handle does have a one uh, part that it kind of sticks up on versus the other but the spouts are identical looking it is a mirror image of itself other than that it is beautiful. This is in a wonderful cobalt blue with gold trim and gold lines. Underneath, you can see where it says Twin Spout Tea Master and the patent number. The patent number is 2135410. And it says right on there, made in the USA. It's just gorgeous. So, so, so beautiful. So, let me just set that on something that's not going to clang around. Let me tell you all about this patent, because if anybody knows me, you know that I love a good patent with tea wear. <laughs> so, so let, I'll try to put it up on the screen here, because they have spectacular drawings that were submitted in uh, 1937. So it was filed May 22nd, 1937. And the drawings are spectacular. Oscar Otterson was the applicant from New York, New York. He applied May 22nd, 1937. And we can realize then that it took until almost winter time before the patent was actually approved. So it was patented November 1st, 1938. And sometimes you'll see contradictions of what um, piece was actually intended for versus what people think it was for. Uh, however, I'm not opposed to finding new ways to use something, but I love to understand why something was created in the first place. So let us just read the first couple lines. This invention relates to a teapot and one object of the invention is to provide a device of this character so constructed that it will be divided into separate compartments one for tea and the other for hot water and thus permit the same teapot to be used for holding tea and hot water. It will thus be seen that when serving tea, tea may be first poured from the teapot and if the tea is too strong, hot water may then be poured to dilute the tea in the cup. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> I love that that was, you know, a problem that needed to be solved because a lot of, you know, my vintage tea, um, some of my vintage teaware actually comes with a hot water uh, jug. So this contained it all together. So, so, so clever. And the signatures, oh, Oscar's signature. He was called the inventor. And then there's the attorney was the signature as well. Now, when I read through this, there are a couple things that were changed from what Oscar actually filed his patent for. And these teapots would have been from, made in like the 40s, so this makes sense. He got his patent approved at the end of 1938. So one thing that the patent talked about was that it was gonna actually have an H for hot water and a T for tea on either side 
to be able to indicate. It would typically just be one person serving the tea to your guests. The lid is all one piece. And then this is where it starts to get pretty interesting. So you can see the two separate cavities. One cavity is smaller. This is where your hot water would go. And the reason why it is a smaller cavity is because you're not gonna have to fish anything out. So when you go to clean it, you're not gonna be fishing out tea bags or anything like that. That's why the tea side is bigger. As well, the way that they've indicated that it's tea is by putting that nub there. So typically you're gonna be pouring your tea is the most common thing that you're gonna be pouring and you have that there little thumb rest, which is spectacular. So if I feel down into here, I can feel there's like solid on this side, solid on this side, and you can almost see it. If you look on the bottom, you can see where it's kind of like together. When I dig my hand in here, on the water side, I can feel that the spout is free. There's no holes, there's no nothing. It's just a free moving spout. If I dig my fingers on to this side where the T would go because it's bigger, I can actually feel that they've made, um, it, it's, uh, it has like the little holes to try to keep some of the tea bags and the loose tea in. So it, it has a little bit of a filter, whereas this side does not. There's also, and I don't know, this might be hard to see, there's also a hole here. So this here is the water side, this is the tea side, in between is this is the wall. At the very tip of the wall, there's this here little tiny hole. And that is so that if you're pouring, you might end up getting a little bit of the water as an overflow. And they talk about that in the patent and they say that they feel like that's not going to hinder. I also have this lovely Fiesta Ware. I thought that would be, you know, perfect to go with this teapot. So this Fiesta Ware, I'll put it up on the screen. I can't quite remember how old this is, but of course you look at that back stamp and that's how you figure out your Fiesta Ware age or any of the age. That's, that's the first place that you go to look. All right, let's test this guy out. So I got some traditional red rose because you know, my aunties would love a red rose. So, and they might put more tea bags in there than I care for. And I might be like, aunties, I wish we could uh, dilute that some. So we have our hot water. We're going to put our hot water in on our tea side. Let that steep, but we're also going to get our hot water going on the hot water side. There we go, about even. And we put our lid back on. Our lid is just very simple. Um, a little tiny, little tiny uh, handle and it has these two uh, grooves. So there you have it. And the grooves just kind of fit in there. I find that it's not the best fitting. I feel like they could have done a better job with this. Maybe I am putting it. But it is gorgeous. Like it's still, that is a beautiful teapot. So unique. We're gonna grab ourselves a nice cup of tea. And like I said, my aunties loved to have it steeped, steeped, steeped. <laughs> so we have this here nub, so I know that because I am the one that put the stuff in here and that would usually be the person that's serving it, I know that my thumb being here on this here little rest, I'm gonna be pouring tea, so let's give it a go. I'm pouring tea. 
And the thing was is that they say you were supposed to leave enough room so that people could have, you know, sugar or milk or add water. So you can see I've left some room. All right. And not to be disrespectful, Auntie, but that tea is quite strong. Oh dear, let me give you some hot water. There we go, I have diluted the tea. And then this way, Auntie's can have it super strong and I can have it a little bit weaker. <laughs> There's just something comforting about red rose, isn't there? Brings you back to your childhood, maybe? These teapots do come in different colors. So I've seen them in red and yellow. Um, I think I've seen them in a green and they come in a like a baby blue, almost like this. They also come without the gold. Some of them I've seen with different decorations on them. So if you search hall, twin spout, teapot. You'll see what you find. That's pretty nifty, right? Let me know if you enjoyed exploring my teapot collection like this and I will continue doing that. I will talk to you guys in the comments down below. Until next time, take care. Bye! Mm, now I have drinking. Drinking to do! And I love all my aunties.